This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joynton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are both from the Family History Center. I have Rosemary Guthrie and Don Kalashewski. Good morning and welcome. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Great to have you here. It's been so long when I ran into Rose Marie. I said, Rose, do you still do genealogy? I haven't heard from you in forever. She goes, oh, yes, and so many changes, So, which led to you being here today. Thank you both very much. And Dawn, you are the new director. I am. So tell me what your plans are. Oh, we have a lot of plans. Um, we have started having monthly classes. Um, we are doing both on family history itself and some of the programs available both in the center and online. We also are offering scrapbooking once a month for those who are interested in that, thinking that they're so closely related between family history and scrapbooking so that if you're doing one, you're probably going to be doing the other sooner or later too. So There will be another, um, some more genealogy preserved for future generations. Let's hope. <laughs> okay. Now, Rosemary, you've been, like I said, been doing this for many, many years. Tell me about the Family History Center, the f fa yeah, Family History Center. Well, um, we're located at 411 Long Rapids Plaza, and I say plaza because we're right next door to the orthopedics. Um, oh, okay. Um, and um, uh, we are open on we Tuesday and Wednesdays from 10 until 3 o'clock, and we have um, over 1,500 rolls of microfilm there. Wow. In addition, we also have um, we have um, collections in our vertical files of the um, state of Michigan which um, some of them are manuscript collections. We also have Native American collections, the Gruet manuscript. Um, we, we also um, have about, what would you say, eight? Um, we have eight sites um, that are um, paid right. for sites. We call them premium sites because if you had them at home, you would pay $100 for okay. them or more. And of course, one of them is Ancestry, but there's also uh, World Vital Records. Oh, um, there's mm -hmm. just a tremendous uh, uh, page, uh, the Anderson page on Civil War and Military. Um, there's Fold 3. There's just many, many of them. Um, some of them are uh, exclusive for uh, an ethnic group such as the Swedish group. There's much of that online. Um, and anyway, they're, they're available at the Family History Center at no cost. Now, I know years ago, genealogy used to be one of the fastest growing hobbies in the world. Is it still that way? Yes, it is. Okay. It's still, and, and even more so now that so much of it is online. And, um, and we do promote that. Um, there, the um, the um, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, mm -hmm. who sponsors the Family History yes. Center, has a um, site online, the um, FamilySearch.org, and we put about 1.7 million um, items on each week. Wow. We have billions and billions of microfilm in Salt Lake City, and the goal is to get all of that online. Oh, wow. Um, of course, there are copyright issues at times mm -hmm. that we have to work through. But we're indexing, and we're also just um, just digitalizing the images and putting them online. Um, one of the collections that I've really enjoyed has been the Canadian uh, Catholic Church records. Ah. That you can, if you know the church and the and the city, you can just go to that and browse through until you find the approx or you might want to start at the approximate year and, and browse through until you find the actual record. Wow! And then you actually have the document, you know, so, and there are many more like that, many, many more. Okay. Now, Dawn, I know this is really habit forming. Once you get started, you can't Very stop. Much. <laughs> you do the main <laughs> branch of the family, then the next branch, and you keep going and going and going. But, you know, right. what a wonderful thing to do, and like you said, to preserve, preserve the history for your family. Very much. That's my idea. And now these classes that you have, like, for example, um, February 22nd, it's a Saturday, Family History Fair, a broadcast of five Roots Tech programs. These sessions address the needs of the beginning online researcher. Perfect right. for anyone who wants to start doing research. We're hoping, and we do have a sign up if people want to call our phone number. It is 358-9809, uh, or that's probably the easiest way to do it. We're also on a wiki page so they can contact us that way and there okay. are more, more phone numbers and information there. 
for more information, but we have five classes we're offering. These are directly classes directly broadcast from Salt Lake City. They oh, have a okay. big fair once a year with genealogy because it's known as the site to go sure. to every year. And from there, we're able to broadcast, and so we're having five in February and five in March broadcast. The ones in March will be a little bit more for the intermediate, although anyone can attend. And we just want to know, get numbers so that we make sure we have enough seating and that type of thing. And as I look at these, how to interview yourself for a personal history, um, effective database searching tactics, beginner guide to going paperless, do-it-yourself photo restoration. I guess I wouldn't think right. of the photo restoration, how important that would be in family mm -hmm. history. Very much. And this website that she was talking about, this familysearch.org, much like Ancestry, you can put stories of your ancestor or ah. photos of your ancestor in there. And that way, anyone throughout the world who calls these people up can look at those. So. Okay, and DNA ge genealogist, all kinds of things. And then April 23rd, looking for dead relatives. Learn it on the internet set, site, find a grave. May 28th, getting familiar with FamilySearch.org. June 25th, locate your Civil War Anders your um, ancestors on Anderson Page. So all kinds of good things. And then you're having Grandparents Day. So the best thing to do for someone is to give you a call or go oh, on please. your website and check it out. Very much so. We'd love to have them. There's way too much information and too many things. And <laughs> it's so exciting. So I guess the advice for a beginner would be don't feel overwhelmed. No. And we're more than willing to help if, if you have just a name, we can start by there. Wow. And we, everyone there is volunteers, and we're more than willing to help. So, okay. we usually we usually encourage people to bring um, to sit down and make a list of their parents and grandparents. And usually, by the time we get to the grandparents, we need an approximate date and location, and then we we can. We can just help wow. them. We've had some people go back four generations in an hour or two. Yes. Wow. So, yes. In good. fact, here's one for you. There's okay. a booklet that will get you through your first four generations. Oh, yay. Thank so. you very much. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to thank both of you very much for being here. Again, can you give me that phone number one more time? It's 358-9809. And your website? Is... Well, you go well, to well. It's on the wiki page for on go the to familysearch.org family okay. and type in wiki w i k i, and then once you get there, you type in Alpena, Alpena. Michigan. Okay, and and it comes up all, all the dates and everything will come up. Everything so. that we have. Okay, there. and you sure have a lot of stuff. Well, thank you very much for being here and sharing with us, and I look forward to hopefully talking to you again soon, maybe before one of these other events. We'd oh, love to be here. Good. Wonderful. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Please stay tuned for some information on Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Steph Gandula from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Hi, Stephanie. Good morning. I'm so excited about the Thunder Bay Film Festival sponsored yes. by Friends of Thunder Bay um, Sanctuary. I, I'm excited too. We are um, just getting ready to launch the second annual Thunder Bay Film Festival all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, there's so much going on. There's literally 26 films that we're going to be showing. All sorts of filmmakers coming, people, activities. So I thought today I would focus on just since I can't go over all 26 yes. films, I, I'll focus on just a couple of the ones of, of my favorites, okay. the highlights really. So Friday night is the, the opening reception. Starts at six o'clock, doors open, a nice little reception with hors d'oeuvres, cash bar. Movies start at seven o'clock. The highlight that evening is A Century in Stone. So Brian Bellinger and Ann Bellinger, the brother and si sister filmmaking team from Roger City, mm -hmm. They did November Requiem. They're going to be um, showing their film, A Century in Stone, which is all about the history of the calcite quarry. Excellent, excellent film. And then the cool thing is they're going to be presenting it and talking about it. Oh, great. And that, that's kind of one of the, the perks, I think, and the special things of a film festival. I mean, yes. we're, we're always watching movies, right? You watch movies at home. You just press play. And, and when do you have an opportunity to really talk about it with either your neighbor, you know, whoever's sitting next to you, or your, your friends, and with the filmmakers. Yes. So that's, that's the cool interactive Especially thing. Especially so local and close to home. Yes, exactly. So that's Friday night. Okay. Saturday, um, one of the highlights is there's, there's three programs on Saturday, 10 a.m., 2 o'clock, and then 7 o'clock okay. in the evening. Saturday's 2 o'clock program is all about plastic pollution. 
Ah. And um, Hannah McDonald, a, a local high school student who is involved with a, a plastic pollution awareness group here in Alpena, she's going to be presenting that group of films. And so, re, you know, relating it to the Great Lakes, relating it to um, these issues that we really all face. And I think that's going to be an important one to catch. Oh, yes. I know in Hawaii they don't allow plastic bags. Right. I think that's brilliant. It is yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just the, the way it is now, and we all need to be aware of, the, of yes. these issues, even here in, in beautiful, pristine Alpena. Yes, I agree. So that's Saturday's exciting okay. exciting one, the 2 o'clock plastic program with Hannah presenting. And then on Sunday, um, all sorts of fun things on Sunday, we're having special sphere films. That's tough to say. Yes, it is. <laughs> special sphere films all afternoon. And then also an ROV documentary at 2 o'clock. And this is what, all about one of the teams that comes every year to our competition. Ah. This team is from Stockbridge, Michigan. The film is brand new, just out. It's going to be airing on the Discovery Channel. We get it first Ooh. here at the Thunder Bay Film Festival. But it's, um, it's called Stockbridge to Saltwater. And so this ROV team, high school students um, that come to Alpena all the time for the competition, they have, for the last couple of years, have been traveling to Palau in wow. the South Pacific, working with these groups to use their ROVs, their underwater robots that they've built, to search for missing World War II planes. Oh my goodness. So I mean, it's just so exciting that these students get to do this. What an opportunity. Yes. And so this film is all about, all about that journey. So that is um, going to be showcased at 2 o'clock on Sunday. Okay. So those are just the highlights. I wanted to pick out highlights from each day. And so those are some of the highlights for the Thunder Bay Film Festival. Now you have some wonderful events that are going on around it too, like wine mm -hmm. tastings. Yes, wine tasting. Um, just like last year, the Thunder Bay Winery and Stony Acres Winery are um, partnering with us and sponsoring Sponsoring, and they're going to have wine tastings on both Friday and Saturday night. Okay. And also um, wine available for sale. So you can grab a glass of wine before you head in to watch the movie. Okay, perfect. And then Sunday, we're having the official wrap party at the Black Sheep Pub, um, Sunday at 5 o'clock. And that's going to be one of the you know laid-back events. You can go in, hang out with the filmmakers, um, hang out with uh, sanctuary staff, sanctuary volunteers, fans of the film festival. And so 5 o'clock, there'll be um, just a, a little more of a fundraiser for the Friends Group, and, and just a fun time, an official wrap party at the Black Sheep. Okay, and you had some other sponsors too? We do. We have all sorts of sponsors. Okay. It's, it's, I love these events because it's such a great opportunity to reach yes. out and, and get these and sponsors. you guys are excellent at that. <laughs> it's, it's lots of fun to interact with these folks. So Huron Distributors okay. is, a, is another sponsor. We've got um, Cabin Creek okay. Coffee is donating coffee for the intermission Yay. on Friday night. And North Country um, Candy and Gifts, they're donating the chocolates. I, we, we have this fancy little intermission on Friday night. So you take a break, have a cup of coffee and a little chocolates. Um, so there's some more of our sponsors right there. Our, one of our headline sponsors is the um, Alpena Area Credit Unions, and, and they yes. gave us a, a great grant um, for the festival. And um, also the Alpena Convention and Visitors Bureau helped us out a lot. So just some of the sponsors for the festival this year. Okay, and the dates are? Uh, Friday, Janu yep. January 24th? Yep, through Sunday. So January okay. 24th through Sunday the 26th. That's this weekend. That's this weekend coming right up. And a couple of folks have said, you know, why? Why in January? And perfect time. I think me. it's perfect timing. Oh, I mean, yes. just it's nice to be in a warm theater when it's snowing out. But it's also a, an opportunity to really, you know, expand and extend our Alpena tourist season. Oh, yes. I mean, I've actually had a number of calls from folks as, as far away as Grand Haven. In fact, one of the filmmakers who's coming yes. is coming from Grand Haven. And so this is an opportunity to, you know, potentially make Alpena. A, a wintertime destination for the film festival. Also, of course, for ice fishing and snowshoeing and all those other snowmobiling. Um, right. But just another um, a draw for the community. And spring and summer is way too busy to do it. That's so right. We like got lots said, going on then. You know, it's cold <laughs> and it's going to be held no matter what the weather is. So That's come right. on down. Mm -hmm. You know, just if it's snowy and blowy, hey, it's northern Michigan. Just do it. Come That's on down. Right. And it'll be something so wonderful. And tickets are very affordable. They are. Tickets are um, $25 for the Friday night reception and movies. And then Saturday all day, you can... Um ten dollars okay. for admission for all three programs sunday ten dollars all day for all the programs students have a great rate five dollars all day saturday i mean you can't go to the movies for that no. and five dollars all day sunday for that's the student rate and if you want to catch all the films um or all three days it's forty dollars for a weekend pass okay and this is a wonderful fundraiser mm -hmm. and friend raiser for thunder bay national marine sanctuary too that's right yep it's part of um, one of our major events for our friends group which exists to support the, the mission of the sanctuaries education and 
research programs. Okay, and speaking of friends, we always need more volunteers. We do, and there's still time to volunteer for the film festival. Okay. So if you're interested, give us a call at 356-8805. Um, there's, there's lots of opportunities with the film festival. And then, as you know, we've got events all year long that we're always looking for volunteers for. And I know you're gearing up, getting ready for Lady Michigan and That's right. all the school kids and the classes and all yep. the fun stuff. And we'll look forward to hearing the, the joyous giggles as the ship goes <laughs> under the bridge each time. That's right. They love it. They love to hear that the loud horn when it goes under the bridge. And we're already booking classroom cruises on the Lady Michigan, already for, for May. So if a, a teacher out there wants to make sure she gets the time she wants or he, mm -hmm. give you a call. Yep, call right now. Okay, and the website is wonderful too. I encourage people to go to the website. It updates you on everything that's going on all the time. It's a very easy to use website and it's a very nice website. Well, thank you. Yep, thunderbay.noaa.gov and always on Facebook. I'm, I'm going to be posting little snippets of the films throughout, oh, the, throughout the week. So um, stay tuned for that. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you okay. very much and Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joint and following these messages. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Olin Joint, President of Alpena Community College, and my guest this morning, returning to the program, Executive Director of the ACC Foundation, Penny Bouldry. Welcome back. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Jointon, for having me. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, how about to start off uh, acquainting the audience members, uh, what is the ACC Foundation, what is its purpose, and then I think we're going to focus on scholarships a little bit later in the program. Okay. Well, the ACC Foundation is a charitable nonprofit organization that exists to support the college, and it was established in 1982. Uh, it has a separate board, as you know, from the college, and uh, along with 17 community members, it's led by Sue Fitzpatrick, who's our president. Very good. And uh, what is the purpose of the foundation? What, how does it relate to the college? Well, our mission is to support the college, and we do that primarily through fundraising for scholarships, programs, departments, and capital projects like our Building on a Powerful Future campaign. So if people wanted to uh, donate to ACC uh, and get the benefits of doing so through a 501c3 corporation and the uh, tax deductions uh, uh, that that entails, um, they would do so through the ACC Foundation. Is Absolutely. That mm -hmm. um, and uh, capital projects, uh, w what's the current focus for the uh, building and, and capital improvements for the college? Right now we're helping the college raise dollars for our new electrical power technology center and last uh, fall the foundation initiated a $600,000 building a powerful future campaign and to date we have about $63,000 left to raise to meet our goal um, and we will pass those funds along to the college. So only about 10 percent to go. Absolutely. We're getting close to the our goal and making this project a reality for the college utility tech students and our industry partners. Well, that's great. Uh, uh, most people in the community know that we're headed in that direction and uh, it's our purpose to build up the electrical trades programs which are so successful now. Uh, there's some uh, places where the new technology has gone that we need to be able to equip our students to, uh, to, to deal with when they get in the workplace. So mm -hmm. it's a uh, uh, capital improvement at the college. Uh, uh, the uh, instructors have done a great job of uh, building up their programs uh, and really earned the right and the privilege to uh, uh, operate in this new facility. And the industry partners uh, have been very enthusiastic uh, assisting us with uh, this project. Absolutely. Well, uh, let's turn now to scholarships. Golly, uh, ACC uh, costs so much less than universities. Uh, is there really even a need for scholarships? Um, actually, there is. <laughs> Almost any student who walks through the doors today, they face financial challenges, and they rely on student loans, financial aid, and scholarships to help them with their tuition so they can achieve their academic goals. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, even though the low cost of ACC uh, is, is a real plus, um, there are still many in the community uh, who need to go to ACC and need some extra help to do so. In fact, over 60% of ACC students receive some kind of financial aid, uh, one kind or another. And mm -hmm. so that makes the, the value of the ACC education and the net cost of attending even better. Absolutely. 
So uh, how do scholarships uh, get set up at, at the ACC Foundation? Well, over the years, um, the foundation has worked with individuals, uh, businesses, and other foundations, uh, organizations, to establish scholarship funds. And our new booklet is out. There's 165 named scholarship funds, many named in memory or in honor of individuals. And they provide annual scholarship awards to our students. Uh, there's a wide variety of scholarships to select from, uh, some based on programs. Others, it just doesn't matter whether you're working on a degree or a certificate. I believe I read that uh, uh, about $160,000 of scholarship aid was dispensed by the foundation for the last academic year. Absolutely. About 300 students receive scholarships provided by uh, generous individuals and businesses. Well, that, that's terrific. So foundation this way operates as kind of a middle entity between the donors setting up the scholarship and helping the students uh, receive those scholarships. Absolutely. If I'm a student uh, and I want to apply for one of those scholarships, uh, what do I do? Well, you can either go to our website, um, www.alpinacc, and click on Paying for College. Our scholarship booklet will appear there as well as the um, application. And the students just need to look through the booklet, apply for any and all scholarships that they fit the criteria for. And for probably 80% of them, you do, need, you do not need to qualify for financial aid, uh, and you don't have to complete the FAFSA uh, because the scholarship award is not based on financial need. Basically, any student walking through the door would benefit from a, a scholarship. Is the application real long and complicated? No, it's quite simple, but I do tell the students, if you're interested in applying, to take that opportunity to write a paragraph or two about yourself. It's your opportunity to brag because many of our donors select their scholarships directly, our financial financial aid office does not select them. So you need to sell yourself in about a minute or two. Uh, so be sure, to, be sure to include all of the things that you've accomplished. Toot your own horn, put your best foot forward. Absolutely. Those are skills that benefit us in, in, in many respects in life. That's true. All right, all right great. Is, is there a deadline for applying? Yes, um, scholarship applications are due to our office on March 24th. So the students really have a lot of time right now and I encourage them to take the time to do a good job on their scholarship application. Right. Well, uh, what if I'm a donor uh, out there in the community or a prospective donor thinking, well, uh, I'd like to help out in this way uh, and uh, perhaps uh, name a scholarship in honor of somebody that's uh, significant for me. Uh, uh, how would I go about that? Well, they can give me a call at 358-7297 and I can certainly set up a time to meet with them. But the process is pretty simple. Um, I sit down with the individual and they can decide the dollar amount that they'd like to award. Our scholarship awards, our average is about $500, uh, but we have some scholarships that go and pay for the full tuition for that uh, year for that student. The individual can decide on the grade point average, the program, and anything else that's important to them. Uh, and together we work so that they can achieve their goals. So if nursing is real important for me, I could specify a college scholarship Absolutely. for nursing students. Uh, yes. Very good. We can always find a student to match a scholarship. That's good. Uh, well, thank you very much for the work that you do on behalf of ACC students uh, in, in all these different uh, projects of the foundation. And I appreciate your being on the program this morning also. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smitham and Dr. Olam Joynton. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on Community. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.